Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about Venn diagrams. And Venn diagrams are essentially rectangles with circles inside. And they can be used for many things in mathematics, but in probability, they can be used specifically for us to derive many rules of probability without having to rely on memorization. Because there's only so much space in there, at least for me. So as I said, Venn diagrams are going to be diagrams consisting of a rectangle with circles inside, and I will get back to this, but let's go to a coin tossing experiment. So suppose I flip a fair coin three times. Now the possible outcomes I can see are heads, 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 tails, etc. And I know there's eight possible outcomes, and I know that without even listing them, because I can make a tree diagram. Now, unlike the tree diagrams that we've seen in previous videos, I am not using up outcomes. For example, when I wanted to put my friends named one, two, three, four, five in a line, if I put person two in the first position, then there's only four more choices for the second position. But here, if I get heads or tails on my first toss, I didn't use up the fact that I can get heads or tails on the next toss. So I get two branches here representing heads or tails on the first toss, then two branches on each of these representing heads or tails on the second toss, and then two branches on each of those for a total of two times two times two or two cubed or eight possible outcomes. And the outcome, for example, tails, heads, heads is represented by this branch right here. Let's define an event A to be the event that we saw at least two heads. So out of our eight outcomes, that consists of the events heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads, or tails, heads, heads. So there's four. And let's let B be the event that we see heads on the second toss. So that consists of, it also happens to be four events, and it's heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, heads, or tails, heads, tails. A Venn diagram is going to help us understand how we can put these sets together in different ways. When you write a Venn diagram to represent events for probability, you draw a rectangle and then you draw a couple of circles and you label one, in this case, A and the other one, B. And this kind of picture here, this configuration of circles is a really generic Venn diagram. So if you have information that says A and B are completely separate and disjoint, then the circles wouldn't overlap. Or if you have information that says that the event B is completely contained within the event A, and that's another special picture, but this is a generic picture. Now the union of A and B is a new set, and this consists of everything that's in A or B or both. And we denote a union by writing A and then this U, B. Now there's no like line down the side of the U, it's just kind of this cup, A union B. And again, this consists of everything that's in A or B or both. So let's try it for our coin example. In this case, I've got four elements in A and four in B, and I've got some overlap, but some not overlap. When you union them, you don't want eight elements necessarily, especially not in this case. The union is just the set describing everything that's in A or B or both. If they both have heads, heads, heads in them, then you only need to denote that once in your union because you've already sort of counted it. So going through these two sets, A and B, and finding the union, the union will consist of heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, or tails, heads, heads. Five outcomes. And again, we can visualize the union by uh, a Venn diagram and shading everything that is in A or B or both, which is in that intersection part. Ah, the intersection. The intersection of two events or two sets is everything that is common to both of them. So we denote an intersection of sets A and B with this upside down U. So this is red A intersect B and it consists again of everything that's common to both sets. So let's go back to our example where we had these two sets. Now there are three elements in this case that happen to be in both. Heads, 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 tails, and tails, heads, heads. So that is how we define the intersecting set. And in a Venn diagram, this is going to be visualized by us shading everything that is in A and B both at the same time, which is going to be this little region in here. 
Next up, I want to define what is known as the complement of the set or event A. Now, a complement of the set A really has absolutely nothing to do with the set B. But I'm going to start my Venn diagram the same way, just to show you that this doesn't have to throw you. So the complement of A is denoted by an A with a superscript C, and this is everything outside of A, whether or not you have a B even drawn here. So you can see I've shaded everything outside of A, which ended up covering some of the B. As another example, let's consider the set A intersected with the complement of B. This is everything that is inside A and also outside of B, and it's gonna be this region right here. In our coin flipping experiment, we have a sample space omega, which consists of eight possible outcomes. And these are all things that can happen when you flip that coin three times. Now, if it's possible for the coin to land on its edge and not really give you heads or tails, then that needs to be in the sample space. So here I'm assuming that can't happen. Uh, and so if the probability that the uh, event omega happens, this is the probability that we get an outcome. We get one of these and we have to get one of these when we flip the coin three times. And let me just say again, if there's another possibility, if we don't have to get one of these, then it should have been in your omega. And we are gonna think of probability as area. And we're gonna think in the Venn diagram of that rectangle as representing the entire sample space omega. And we're gonna imagine that the rectangle has area one, and we're going to compute probabilities with areas in these pictures. So the probability that omega occurs is the probability that you've got an outcome and you have to get something. So this is gonna have probability one. A circle like this with a line through it is a way we denote the empty set. Another way we can write this is two brackets with nothing in the middle. And this represents the event that nothing happens. So if you flip that coin three times, this is saying nothing happened. You didn't get any outcome and that's not possible that will happen with probability zero. So it's always going to be true in probability that the probability that the empty set happens is zero. So as I was saying, we can think of probability as area in a Venn diagram, and this can help us compute all sorts of probabilities. For example, the part that I've shaded here, this represents A union B. So that's everything that's in A or B or both. And if I want the probability, of seeing A union B occur uh, as an outcome, then I can make up this shaded area in many ways. One way is to take the total area in A plus the total area in B, and then realize I've double counted the intersection. So we have our first rule of probability. The probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection. Now, what if you want to compute the probability of the intersection? This one I think is a little harder to see this way, and I might just go to the previous formula, which had the probability of A intersect B in it, and move things around. But we can think of this area in here as being made up of the full area of A plus the full area of B, so that has the overlap twice, and then we take away the entire union area so that that takes away the A stuff and the B stuff and one of the overlap pieces, leaving us with a single overlap piece. If we're thinking of the rectangle as the entire state space and thinking of probability as area and therefore thinking of this rectangle as having area one, if you have an event A and you wanna talk about the probability that A does not happen, so some outcome in the complement of A, that is just the area all outside of A, and you can write that as one, the total area, minus the area in A, which we're calling the probability of A or P of A. Now, I said at the beginning, when you draw a generic Venn diagram, you may need more sets, but you should in general give them some overlap unless you know some specific things. And here's a specific thing. The events A and B are said to be disjoint if they don't overlap. And so this means that there's no intersection, which means that A intersect B is going to be the empty set. Now, if A and B are disjoint, the set A union B consists of everything shaded right here. 
And I can get that by taking the A area and adding the B area. And if you're worried about why do we have this rule at this time and this rule at that time, really nothing has changed. Because before we said the probability that A union B happens is the probability that A happens plus the probability that B happens minus the probability of the intersection. But the intersection here is the empty set and that has probability or area zero. So really this rule up here is just a special case of the one we've already established. So given two events A and B or sets, if we want to think of them that way, we can put them together and complement things and union and intersection in them and we've hit the big ones, the union, the intersection, and the complement of one of them. Now suppose I want to compute the probability that the event A intersected with B complement happens. This isn't something I would ever think about in a list of rules because it's really specific. And there are so many different kinds of sets I can put together with these pieces and you don't want to be memorizing these probabilities. So again, I want to find the probability that A intersect B complement happens. And if you shade that, that's everything that's in A and not in B, which is this piece right here. So there's more than one and actually more than two ways to come up with this probability or this shaded area out of other pieces of area. One thing is we can compute the probability that A occurs, so this total area, and we can take away the probability that A intersect B occurs. Another way is we can talk about the probability that A union B occurs, so that's this total area, and then we can take out the probability that B occurs. And there's other things we can do, and which one should you do? Well, in a problem, you're gonna have things you're given, things you know, uh, someone's putting marbles in urns or, or dealing cards, and there's gonna be some probabilities you know and some probabilities you wanna know, and you should try to write the probability that you want to know in terms of pieces that you do know. So for example, if I give you an exercise where I tell you the value of the probability of A union B and the probability of B, then you wanna use the second expression here. So again, to compute a probability out of pieces, you can do it in many ways, but you should choose the way that works for you, given the information that you have. Let's go back to the coin. I'm flipping a fair coin three times. That's eight possible outcomes. Here's the sample space right here. And I am again going to let A be the event that I see at least two heads, which consists of these four outcomes. And all outcomes in A are equally likely because the coin doesn't know what it's doing from one flip to another. I think I talked about this in an earlier video, but if you had uh, 20 coin flips, you might think with a fair coin that it's really hard to get 20 heads in a row and you'd be right. But it's equally as hard to get heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, heads. So any specific group of 20, they're all equally likely. In this case, because these four outcomes are equally likely, we can compute the probability that A occurs by counting the number of outcomes in A and dividing by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So we get four over eight or one half. So here's the whole sample space. Here are the two sets A and B that we have been considering so far. Here are other sets that we can make out of them. This is A union B, so that's everything in A or B or both. And remember, don't, don't put things in twice. Uh, here is A intersect B and A complement. Now, if I want to compute the probability that A intersect B complement happens, one thing I can do is actually figure out what that set is. A intersect B complement is everything that's in A but not in B. And in this case, for these two A and B sets, this consists of one outcome. And because all eight outcomes are equally likely, the probability that A intersect B complement occurs is one out of eight. Now we did come up with a couple of formulas for computing the probability that A intersect B complement happens. One of them was to take the probability that A happens, which represented an entire circle filled in, and then subtract out that, that intersection part, the probability that A intersect B happens. And so we can compute that using these numbers up here, the probability that A happens, A has four outcomes, and so that probability is four out of eight, and A intersect B has three outcomes, and that probability is three out of eight, so I can get the probability that A intersect B complement happens by taking the probability that A happens minus the probability that A intersect B happens, and we get 1 eighth, which is exactly what we got on the previous slide when we actually worked out what this set was. 
And a few slides ago, we actually had two different ways to write down this probability. So the other way we did it was to say the probability that A and not B happened is the probability you got something in the whole union and then take away the area in the B part. And looking at the sets I've defined above, A union B contains five... <laughs> A union B contains five elements and they're equally likely, so that probability is five eighths. And then I want to take out the probability that B happens, and that is four out of eight. Again, we get one eighth as we should because I've just computed the same exact probability for the third time. Now, if any of that was confusing, please draw the diagram. That's the whole point. So put the diagram down on some paper in front of you, and I think you'll be able to get this as well. Sets, unions, intersections, complements. You can imagine, and you're going to see this soon, uh, many, many events like A, B, C, D, E, and looking at all sorts of different pieces. A intersected with B union C all complemented, stuff like that, and finding really complicated probabilities. And if you just have a problem in a textbook that says, here is the probability that A intersect B happens, and here is the probability that the complement of C happens, and I want you to compute this particular probability. It can be really confusing, but not if you draw a picture. So in the next video, we're going to talk about conditional probability, and that's where you have a sneaky insider friend who's giving you insider information. I'll see you in the next one.